Um, and with that, so Greg, this is now looking at the account management page. Um, can you walk us through, now that we're in as a user, what kind of flexibility does Portal Guard IDAS offer the user when it comes to offering authentication options for them? Yep, so this is, as you mentioned, this is the end user's view of their own account. And so, you know, there's a lot of features are enabled, you know, just to kind of show them in this demo. So this is a pretty busy screen, uh, but for the most part, you can see, you know, very clear messages to the user about when their password is going to expire, last activity on their account. Uh, they can even launch into a password change from here, uh, you know, if their admin lets them. Uh, and so that is a key point here is that all of these, uh, all, all these sections are really driven from the security policy that the admin has, you know, has kind of, you know, put their all their risk policies and uh, behavior that they want to occur for a user. That happens on the server side, you know, in the security policies, and then how that's expressed is what I'm seeing as an end user. So, for example, being able to come in and this, the admin allows me to change my default. Uh, multi-factor method for the website. And so maybe, you know, that is the case for some security policies and some users, but not others. So again, all this is centrally controlled and driven from the administrator and what the organization's risk tolerances and policies are. Um, but so being able to, you know, whether it's something like Google Authenticator or hardware tokens, again, these are all, it's a whole bunch of them in here, even old, old style uh, HMAC OTP tokens, um, all the way up through the more recent FIDO2 tokens. Um, and you know WebKey as well, which is the fingerprint-based authentication. Uh, this is where an end user can go to completely manage their account. You know, maybe enroll additional factors, and then they go in, and then they can choose uh, to use different ones. You know, for you know, based again, all of these, for example, are enabled in the security policy that Chris showed you, and what is actually allowable, you know, by the admin. And then this is a list of what I have also enrolled. You know, so uh, again, a lot of a lot of flexibility there, but still, uh, you know, we try to help our organiz our customers maintain that balance between security and usability. Absolutely important, you know, just the same you know today as it was you know ten years ago. Uh, but you, you know, some of these technologies can be so disruptive that it's important to not completely alienate your end users. You still want them, whether they are employees or whether they're customers, you want them to be able to have some control over their you know experience. Yeah, that's a great point. I think we're, like you said, this is with every option turned on, but that should give uh, the audience kind of a, a good example of the flexibility and the options. And that's really the one of the secrets behind Portal Guard is just making sure that there's enough options there so you can get this all under one unified platform. For all of you out there that are using five plus different solutions, two to four solutions, right? It's a good opportunity to think, do I really need different solutions for every single multi-factor or my single sign-on approach, for example? Um, and Greg, so actually you mentioned the security and usability balance. I think now we say security and convenience, but I agree. I think it's been the same balance we're trying to all achieve out there. 